Salute is a program for and about men and women who have served our country. Our program includes news about the laws that affect veterans, information on benefits and services, and news from veterans organizations. And now, our host, Bob Peters. Hello and welcome to Salute. Today I have the pleasure of having Debbie Winters and Jim Dow from Honor Flight with us today. I want to welcome you guys to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, I guess well, the first question would be, what is Honor Flight for those few people who don't know? You want to start and I'll fill in? Okay. Uh, Honor Flight is a nonprofit organization that started about eight years ago nationally to take World War II veterans to see their memorial that was built about eight years ago in Washington, D.C. Uh, about two years ago in the villages, uh, several people got together and said, we have a lot of World War II vets in our local community, and we need to do something to get them to Washington, D.C. so that they can see their memorial before they pass away. Uh, and so Honor Flight, Villages Honor Flight, was created at that time to be able to raise funds to take veterans to see their memorials. Uh, right now we're taking World War II vets, but later on we'll do Korea and Vietnam and the other wars as well. But that's what Honor Flight National is, and we are a hub of the national organization called Villages Honor Flight. Okay. okay. Now, let me just back up a little bit here. You, you, I, it's been said already, you guys live in the villages. Right. How, uh, how did you get started in this? Um, I moved to the villages about two years ago, and probably the first week that I was in the villages, I was reading the paper, because uh, you're new to Florida, I'm from Washington State, so I'm a long ways from home, we had no family, no friends, and so you're looking for things to do, and once you retire, you're looking for something that serves a purpose. My dad's retired career Navy, so I'm a Navy brat, and I'd heard about Honor Flight, uh, and I thought that was a great thing that I wanted him to do. Um, unfortunately, he's not a World War II vet, so it's not his turn to go yet. And there was a big ad in there saying that they wanted to start a local hub to service Lake, Sumter, and Marion counties. And so I called the name that was in there, and the gal said, oh, we'd love to have you help. I said, what can I do? She said, do you know how to use the phone? And I was a secretary for many years in the high school and I was on the phone all the time. So I started calling the veteran applications. And at that time we didn't have any guardians. We had a, a huge list of veterans that wanted to go on the honor flight, but we didn't have any guardians to take them. So that's kind of how I got started was um, calling veterans, getting background information on them. And then at that time we started having meetings and kind of trying to put together what would be a hub or an organization that could raise money to be able to afford to make a flight to Washington, D.C. So that's kind of basically how I got started. And Jim, uh, you are a Vietnam veteran, am I that's correct? correct? That's well, correct. Th first, thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate and then how did you get involved? Well, I'm from Missouri, southwest Missouri, Branson, Springfield area. My Rotary Club had some other gentlemen and ladies that were involved in Honor Flight that kind of got me involved. So I got pretty involved in the Ozark Honor Flight in southwest Missouri. When I came here and found out we had a club here, or a hub, excuse me, uh, I made a phone call and they immediately kind of sucked me into the process because we're always looking for more people. Uh, it's one of those things where you just never quite have enough volunteers. So if somebody wanted to volunteer, you go where? You can go to our website, which is uh, villageshonorflight.org. Uh, Debbie probably has some cards, etc. <laughs> We have a phone number if you want to give them the phone number. It's 352-432-1382. And, and you'll a, get a quick call back from us getting you signed up. That's an info line and we have people on call. I'm on call this week that respond to your questions. So if you want to volunteer, we can route you to the website. You can, get, uh, you can see what we do, who we are, how we work. All the applications are on there. If you want to be a veteran, you want to be a guardian, you can work one hour a week, you can work 50 hours a week, which we both know about, or whatever you want to do. We just need all kinds of people. But we're really looking for vets. We're really mm -hmm. looking for vets. One of our, our biggest issues is getting the word out so that people everywhere know that we exist so that we can get these ladies and gentlemen to their memorial. And you have a way of doing that, right? You have an invitation out there, don't you, for... Uh 
We have somebody a, wants to know more about your organization? We have a speakers bureau and is what you can do if you belong to a club and organization, uh, an American Legion pose, a VFW, a woman's social group, anything like that. And you want to have someone come and talk to your group to explain what Honor Flight is about, we have a veteran, a veteran will come who's been on a flight and a guardian will come and explain like what that whole experience and that whole day is about. And they'll just do a little presentation, tell you a little bit about Honor Flight, how it works, and then how you can either make a donation to help support a veteran to go on a flight. Maybe you would like to be a guardian so that you could go on a flight. Or uh, maybe you want to just get involved as a club or a group to support Honor Flight. Like uh, Jim said, we have many, many opportunities. You can help with just coming to a homecoming. We have a flight coming in September 8th. Sometimes it, they may not get in till 11, 12 o'clock at night, but if there's hundreds or thousands of people waving their flags at the American Legion, when those veterans get off the bus, that is the highlight of their trip. And you make a difference by being there and welcoming them home. Yeah, you have several different flights scheduled. You don't do it every month, right? No. Typically, we fly March, April, May, and June. Then we take off July and August because it's pretty hot. And then we pick back up in uh, September, October, try and do November, and then roll again until the next March. We tend to fly, try to fly 25 vets each time. Each vet has a guardian. So that's about 50, with staff, that's 55 or 60, 56 people on a flight. And so we're going, that's seven or eight months out of the year, assuming everything goes well. Mm -hmm. And you say that the, the village is honor flight. Now, I think we need to clarify that it's just not people who live in the villages that go on these flights, right? Right. Very, when very you important. become a hub, you have to have a name. Uh, the people that were uh, volunteers that were helping get the group started all happen to live in the villages. So you have to send in a name to the national organization. And it's like, well, what can we call ourselves? Tri-County? Well, no, because we service more than Marion Lake and Sumter County. We also go to Hernando, Citrus. And basically, if you're a World War II vet and there's no hub in your area, we'll take you on a flight. You just need to send in an application. So we had to come up with a name. So it was just logical to name it Villages on our Flight. But three-fourths of the veterans that we have taken have been from outside of the villages. Very few are actually residents of the villages. So it's really important that people don't think that because it's called villages that they can't volunteer or that they can't be a guardian or that they can't be a veteran and go on a flight because very few are from the villages. But you have to have a name, and that happened to be the name that was chosen. Okay. And you, you, you said to me a little bit while ago, Jim, that it is primarily World War II, but if you had a terminally ill Korean veteran or, or even Vietnam. Vietnam. Correct. We've taken Korean vets. It's really open, but right now uh, we've got about 1.2, 1.1 million World War II vets left. They are passing away at about 900 a day. They're not getting any younger. They're in their 80s and their 90s. So our priority is to fill the plane with those ladies and gentlemen. Um, if, you ha if you have somebody that has medical conditions and are terminal or whatever in the, in the other war arenas, we'll pull those people up, try and get it done. So it's open to everybody but you can see why our priority is World War II vets. Mm -hmm. First of all, it, it, theirs is the, newest, the memorial that we're trying to take people to, but while, while they're there, they obviously see the Korean and the Vietnam War Memorial too, among other things. We go to the uh, U.S. Marine Corps Memorial normally, we go to the U.S. Air Force uh, Memorial normally, and we go to the Changing of the Guard. So it's, there's a, it's a big day. There's a lot going on. It's not just World War II. Yeah, memorial. I want to come back to that and that, have you give me a a rundown of what a guardian does on a typical day. I'm going to go over here with you, Debbie. Now, I'm, somebody's watching this show and says, oh, my father, my uncle, he lives around here. Maybe he'd want to go. How, how do you go about that? You go straight to the website, like uh, Jim mentioned, www.villageshonorflight.org, and there's an application. There's a veteran application, and maybe it's your uncle and you'd like to go along, then you can download a guardian application. Get that application, fill it out. It's very easy. Just ask basic information. Uh, what did you do during the war? Uh, what was your hometown? Just a little bit about your medical condition. Uh, we do not uh, discriminate. We take everybody regardless of, of medical condition. If you're in a wheelchair, that's okay. The majority of them are in a wheelchair or a cane or a scooter or something like that, so there's no restrictions. Uh, fill out the application. You send it to the post office box, and then you're put on our list. Right now, currently, there's about 150 veterans that are waiting to go, and there's 
there's probably close to 110 guardians on the waiting list at this time to go along on an upcoming flight. So it's a very easy process. Uh, if you do want to go with someone specific, you be sure you make mail the applications together or put a note on there so that we know that uh, when it's time for your uncle to go, that you're his guardian or her guardian, that type of thing. We do have a lot of family guardians because it's a great experience to go with someone in your family. So, mm -hmm. but it's very easy. There's not much to it. And uh, you just get the application in. If you don't get the application in, we don't know who you are. We can't get you on the list. So you do have to fill out an application. Okay, now cost. The veteran goes for free, pays for nothing. If he wants an ice cream cone in the middle of the day, he wants a soda, whatever, he goes for free. Everything is paid for from the time he starts a pre-flight meeting until the end of the trip at the reunion, everything is completely free. A guardian will pay $400, and that is their cost for their airfare, the transportation, uh, these beautiful shirts that we have, uh, all, all of the things that you get as part of being a guardian is included in your cost, which is $400, and it also is tax deductible. So you, you, you get a shirt? You get this beautiful shirt, which we like to model our shirts. <laughs> I have all the flight dates on here on every flight that I've been on. Do you have them my size? We have them on everybody's size. Good. And uh, they are wonderful. We see them throughout the community. Once a veteran's been on a flight, we see them wearing their shirts around town. They're very proud of their shirts. We just had a gentleman uh, move to California. Unfortunately, his shirt was thrown out by a family member who didn't understand the importance of the shirt. Mm -hmm. We're now getting him a shirt and sending it to California because he's so upset he didn't have his honor flight shirt. So it's a very special shirt and it's part of the whole package deal. We have lots of surprises for our, our veterans and uh, the guardians as well and one of them is the shirt. Okay, well let's get back to the guardians. What do you got, uh, what does a guardian do, typical life of a guardian and uh, what do you have to do to become a guardian because I'm going through the for the people at home, I'm going through the process right now. I'm tentatively scheduled, unless you kick me out, to go in <laughs> November with a good friend of mine as, as guardians. And uh, so I know, tell us about the meetings and what do you have to do? Well, the first thing you have to do is put in that application because everything starts with the timing on that application. So you're gonna get put in a queue and you may have to wait three, three flights, four flights, five flights, I don't know. Uh, it just depends on how many Guardian apps are coming in and how quickly we're flying people. So there's always a sliding time scale, but we can give you an estimate of when you'll fly. Uh, we have a lot of things that you know, we try and make this a very personal experience between the Guardian and the vet. Not all hubs do that, we do. Every vet has their own Guardian, and we expect that those Guardians and vets bond. So we have a couple of things. We have uh, formal pre-flight meetings, one about eight weeks out, one about two weeks out, and then obviously we have the flight. Those are training uh, exercises so you know what your job's gonna be, what you're gonna have to be able to do. We also do medical screening at that point. You meet your veteran on that first one, probably you and the vet will meet and, and meet each other and you'll learn about it. We, and we do, by the way, let me sidebar for a minute. When we do our matches, if it's not like you're gonna go with a friend, there's, it's kind of a science, but not a written science, about how we may put a particular veteran with a particular guardian. One of the questions that always comes up is, can we match service? A lot of people, Air Force wants to go right. with Air Force. Some reason, Navy never wants to go with Marines. I don't know what that's all about. But, but <laughs> so we, you know, we, we try and be conscious of that, and we also have to deal with people's abilities. And, and sizes and, and stuff like that. And we, and what percent, we have about 40% of our guardians are female. Right. So we have to deal with that, which is a good thing. They're, they're great caregivers. Um, so back to the process. So you go through that, uh, you put in your application, and you go through the pre-flight, which is a, a couple hours meeting that we do the training, you learn and everything. We have another pre-flight at two, uh, two weeks where we have better information because things change and kind of reiterate some of the things that you that you've learned and in between that you should have a squad meeting and I need to probably back up a little bit we have 25 vets and guardians and they're broke into five squads of five people appear 10 people apiece there'll be a squad leader who has a vet 
there'll be a medic. Every squad has a medic. So if you are a person that has some medical background and can volunteer to be a guardian, you may go very quickly because those are sometimes hard to come by for us. So there's a medic and a squad leader, and then there'll be three other uh, guardians with um, veterans. So in between those two meetings, we kind of like you to have squad meetings. In other words, you may have a luncheon, you may have dinner, you may do an outing, so that you as a group can bond even further. Because this is like going on a mission. I mean, it's mm -hmm. exactly what this is, and we want you to go as a team. So you go through the second, uh, you go through the second pre-flight, and then we start early. And I might as well talk a little bit about what all happens now. So, on the day of the flight, the night before, we go in and we set up at the American Legion. That's the way it is now. About anywhere between 2:30 and 3 or 4 in the morning, a.m., depending on when the flights are, we all congregate. We verify everything, check, make sure everybody's there. We take a bus provided to us by the village's bus, uh, the transportation company. They take us to Orlando. By that time, it's, uh, again, depending on what's going on, it may be 6.30 to 8.30 in the morning before we get off. We go on an airplane, commercial airplane, fly to, uh, uh, we may go into BWI, which is Baltimore. We may go into uh, DCA, which is Reagan. Uh, there's people there to greet us and help us and meet us. We have buses there, and that's when we start the, you're already tired because you've been up, but remember mm -hmm. most of these people are military and kind of used to it, except they're 90 years old. They don't know that. They think they're 18, but anyway, it works. So uh, from there, now, now your work starts, because you got to take care of your, your, your vet. You always have to know where your vet is. You're going to probably walk, was it eight miles, you said, when you checked it? It wasn't quite, quite that far. It was about five. It, it, just at the mall mm -hmm. where the memorials are, it's about a two-mile walk. So as a guardian, you may be walking that, or you may be pushing somebody in a wheelchair that whole time. And you go where the vet wants to go. It's, for, it's all about the vet, not the guardian. So if the vet wants to stay at his World War II memorial, not go to the Vietnam and Lincoln and all that, that's his decision. Because you're there just to take care of them. They're the rock mm -hmm. star of the day, as we say. And then you do all that walking and uh, pushing them around. And you're going to be at the, like I said, you're going to be at the uh, changing the guard, lots of other things. You're just really moving all day long, in and out of buses. You're helping these guys and gals in and out. Uh, at the end of the day, we get back on the bus. We go back to the airport. You got to get them all the way through the airport. You got it. And then we get home, as, as Debbie said, Earliest we ever got back to 10 p.m. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, this last time I shouldn't say this publicly, but it was like 1:20 a.m. <laughs> so if you left it, <laughs> that's right. If you left at 2:30 a.m. and come back at 1:20 a.m., that's a 23-hour day. That's a long day for everybody, and you are responsible number one for the safety of that vet. We want to make sure that we bring back the same 25 we take, and we want to make sure we bring them back safe. They've already done their duty. We don't want to see any more, anything else happen to them. Mm -hmm. That's really what the job of a guardian. It is very, very important. It is, I will tell you from personal experience, and I know Debbie will too, it is a very emotional day, not only for the vet, but for the guardian. Um, the vets, when they get in these groups of 25 guys and gals, there's some camaraderie that starts. There's the normal bickering that we have between services. I'm Air Force, so I'm. I'm it's aware. not really bickering. It's, oh no, it's it's, 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 it's prodding a little it's bit. Prodding. Yeah. It's prodding. It's prodding. You're right. Yeah. So I'm always doing it, and everybody else is doing it, and it's so fun to watch that happen because they just kind of go in back into that mold, mm -hmm. and uh, they you know they may separate, but they all kind of know what everybody's doing. It's really it's very very interesting. Uh, uh, emotional experience that I guarantee you, you will never forget. Mm -hmm. I'm, well, I'm looking forward to it. On, you have several dates on your shirts. Those are the different uh, trips you've taken. Well, these right? are dates because she's got them going down both sides. <laughs> Every time you fly, if you're a guardian, you, you put another date on here. And Debbie's flown seven, eight. Well, one flight was canceled well, in I was October. Tell them, yeah, <laughs> I was the flight. I was honored to be the flight director, and then we didn't fly, and it was the day Sandy hit. And if we had, it was very hard to cancel because, just like I said, the vets went, I stormed Normandy, surely I can get through a hurricane, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and we're going, that'd be nice, but we got to get you back. And we had people on oxygen and people on dialysis. Um, if we had flown, technically we were the very last flight that got out before they shut down the airport. But we don't know that was going to happen, so we had to cancel it. 
So that one didn't happen, and people got pushed back a little bit, but that's okay. But Debbie's, I think you've flown more than any single person, Mark. I've been on every flight, either as a assistant flight director or a guardian. Um, it's, it's very important. It's, it's just every single trip is different. It's a different experience because you've got a different 50 people. Oh, yeah. And there's just amazing things happen. We've had Senator Dole and Senator Elizabeth Dole come and meet us at the World War II Memorial twice now. Uh, we went for a whole year hearing the story about how they come out, and we're like, no, they don't. We've never seen them before. And the last two flights, they've been there to greet our uh, veterans. And uh, Senator Dole will sit there and um, shake hands and visit with each person, ask them where they served and what they did, and it's just amazing. And the veterans are just thrilled to death to have that opportunity to thank him for being the uh, strong supporter of getting the World War II Memorial built. So it's, it's quite an experience. Uh, but yeah. we have many, many wonderful things happen on every single flight. Um, it is an experience you'll never forget. It's hard to say which one's the best because there's always something or that happens that makes it the, be the best trip. So whichever flight you go on, that's going to be the best one. The vet's going to tell you it's the best flight he's ever been on. It's the best guardian he's ever had. And they always want to fly again. So it's, it's a lot of, uh, they don't get to, but <laughs> they always say, I'd go do it again, even though I'm about ready to pass out and it took me a week to recover, yeah. I'd do it again. So, and that's what we hope is that it helps them with closure. It helps them bring back good memories, maybe some that are not so good, but it, it ends that whole cycle that many of them have never talked about before. We recently had a gentleman who, um, when we talked to him on the phone and told him that he was going to be going on the flight, he just started just opened his heart and just told his whole story. He said he'd never told anybody, but he had uh, three Purple Hearts. So he had been through a lot of combat, and he'd never told his family. He'd never told anybody about it. But he started talking about it, and he couldn't quit talking. So the trip was very, very important to him. And I think that that's the thing that we're finding is uh, Tom Brokaw said it best. It's the greatest generation. They are very, very humble. Uh, they don't understand what all the hoopla is about. They don't feel like they're heroes, and we're giving them that thank you that they never really got and were never really able to talk about because they had to come home and they had families waiting for them. They had to get back to work. They had to build a new life, and they kind of put it on the back shelf and haven't talked about it, and people weren't interested. It was like, we got to move forward, and they haven't talked about it. And now uh, we are interested, and we want them to know how much we appreciate what they did because they saved the world. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We've been screwing it up ever since. That's right. That's, sure. that's right. Exactly. You know, they they uh, saved the world, you and we talk should, about that's it. Correct. That's, that's what, that was my uncle's. The same thing. That's the scenario you just painted. My uncle mm -hmm. was—he never talked about it either mm -hmm. until later part of his life, and he talked to me because I'm a veteran. But other than that, there weren't any veterans in the family, right. and he—he uh, he didn't tell me on until later on. And you know, he was awarded the Distinguished Cross for Heroism on the beaches of D-Day. I mean, come on, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's. Uh, We've got about five minutes left, and I know you got some events coming up that you want to talk about. We do. Um, the first event that we have coming up is, is our homecoming for the September 8th flight. So if anybody is in the area of the American Legion on Rolling Acres in the Lady Lake area on September 8th, check our website, kind of find out what time the flight's coming in so you could be there and, and welcome home. Uh, 25 vets and 25 Marines. Former Marines are all guardians for the September flight. Then on September 9th, we have a fashion show. This is not just for ladies, but uh, ladies always love fashion shows. And Anthony's will be putting on a fashion show uh, with a luncheon. And it's just $15. And we will put up a flyer that will give you the contact information, how you can get tickets. It's open to everyone in the communities, all the surrounding communities. Uh, we want everybody to come out. And the highlight is we have two of our World War II veterans that will be modeling. One lady will be turning 90 in December. And the other lady, I believe, is 89. So they're going to be a couple of our models. So we're really excited about that. That's always a lot of fun. And uh, Edna will be wearing her uh, hat that she wore as a wave. And she's very proud of her hat. And she'll be wearing that as she models. So that's a big mm -hmm. event coming up uh, that's kind of just a fun, fun event. But we hope to raise enough money to t uh, sponsor five veterans. 
Uh, so just for $15, you can come and, and find out about all the fun that we have Once as again, well. is, where is it? It's going to be at Colony Cottage. That's in, in the, the villages. villages yeah. But you do not have to be a villager to come. It's open to anyone who buys a ticket, and it's a luncheon and a fashion show on December 9th at 1230 at Colony Cottage. So uh, give our info line a call. And uh, again, the number was 352 432-1382, and then we'll put up a flyer. Also, you can check the website, and there's information there on ordering tickets on our website. Mm -hmm. And then Jim has another big event coming we up. We have a golf tournament on October 12th at uh, Del, Webb, Del Webb Spruce Creek, which I think is Eagle Ridge Golf Course. I can't give you the times because I don't know. It's an all-day event. Uh, so what I would do is go on the website and get it. It's only $60, I believe, if you don't live there. If you live there, it's 32 So it's not a lot of money, but it generates a lot of money for mm -hmm. the Honor Flight. We'd appreciate it if you could come out and play. Yeah, uh, and if you come out to play, and uh, if you are looking to make donations, you can get these lovely T-shirts, which I have one right here. I don't know. So I was supposed to hold this up before we started. That right. <laughs> driving Matt nuts. And on the back... You can see that, uh, which says, if you can read this, thank a teacher. If you can read it in English, thank a veteran. So those are nice shirts, very nice shirts. Yeah, they're nice, heavy shirts. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to going on this, this trip with you guys. So, uh, but I'm just about out of time, so I don't know if there's anything up particularly you really want to get to. I think that pretty much covers everything. I just thank you for doing this. Yeah, we this need the awareness, and we really appreciate the opportunity. And once to talk once to again, if people want you know organization. If you're looking for uh, uh, AMVETS or whatever, you want to come out and talk. You'll come out and talk to them, right? And you can use the support of the veterans community because this is for veterans. They can come to the club, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So we have the village. There's another group, a Village Honor uh, Flight Club which meets on the second and fourth Tuesday, Monday. Monday, excuse me, at 1230. If you want to find out more about us and just see us and maybe touch and feel and find out what we're all about, it's at Colony Cottage, uh, like I said, the second and fourth Monday at 1230. Just come out and see us. That's how people, a lot of people come out and kind of feel it out and they go, this is something I want it's to get right involved. It's right off of 466A for That's people correct. who don't know That's correct. that is. Mm -hmm. Right. The Speakers Bureau is really important, though, because we bring out a veteran, a World War II vet, and a guardian to tell you what the experience meant to them. So any veterans groups that are out there that want to hear about it, maybe you have World War II vets in your community that haven't signed up, we need to get them signed up. That's our goal. It's for the whole five areas that we're covering. Hernando, Citrus, Lake, Sumter, and Marion Counties. Ocala is no longer flying on our flight, so we will now be working into the Marion County, and that's why the uh, golf tournament is at Spruce Creek. So this is not about the villages. This is about all World War II vets. It's about everybody in the communities that want to support and give thanks back to our World War II vets. So. And for more information, the website, once again. www.villageshonorflight.org. And get on there. We have lots of information. Uh, there's a phone number you can call. We'll get back with you within 24 hours to answer any questions that you have. We want your support. We need businesses to sponsor the golf tournament, sponsor a hole. We're going to have a couple cars out there for those great golfers that are hole-in-one people. Yeah. You can win a car. Uh, but we do need business sponsorship. Uh, we would really like to see the community support uh, on our flight because this is a great, great uh, organization. It's well, all nonprofit, all volunteer. All I need to say about this, I went to your meeting. I was very impressed with the, the professional how you people are, you know, and all the other people you got with you, working with you. It's a great organization. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm out of time. Thank okay. you. So this is where I say to all our veterans out there, active military and their family, we salute you for all you do. Till next time. This is our fourth year at Lakefront TV. We're still looking for guests, and we'd love to have you on. We're proud of what we've done in the past. So give us a call at 352-728-9707 and check us out on the Internet at lakefronttv.com. Spread the word and enjoy the show.